Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm playing in my large circle art journal and I'm tackling the subject of the past memories to be precise. Now I've never really had a very strong attachment to you know, my past or to, you know, memories really. Um, for me, what's past is past. What really is important is tomorrow, not yesterday. Yesterday we can't do anything about, tomorrow we can. So the things that happened to me in the past, school, previous work, all that kind of stuff, once it's done, dusted, it's all gone and forgotten. I do remember some things, obviously, people who are no longer with us, that kind of stuff, but I have no real attachment to, say for example, like going to school reunions or work reunions or that kind of thing. It's never really been important to me. I'm a different person today than I was 10, 20 or even <coughs> 30 years ago. So today the art journal page that I'm doing is all about letting go and moving on. So today I'm going to be working in my large circle art journal which I don't seem to have done for quite some time. So I've got some matte medium, I've got some pieces of tissue paper that I'm going to use for the background and I've also got um, an old photograph of a Victorian row of terraced houses. Um, don't know where this came from in the country, don't know where it's set, but what I've done is I've printed it off on a sheet of um, printer paper and then I've just torn around the edges, just feathered those edges a little bit to help blend it into the page um, when I get around to sticking it down. So I'm going to start off by just sticking down this tissue paper with some matte medium um, just at the top where I want to add all the other um, background pieces. So I'm just going to add a little bit of a, a layer of that gel medium. So just across the top, right the way across. And because this is tissue paper, I'm not really going to need a lot to stick it down. So it would stop moving. There we go. That should do us. Not bothered about wrinkles, not bothered about a few bubbles. Just want to get it stuck right down there onto the page. A little bit more glue, maybe. Just lift that up. A little bit more there. And some more just underneath. On those edges. And I'm going to do the same thing with a piece at the bottom down here. A liberal spread. And then we'll line that up to the bottom. Like so. <laughs> Typical. There's always something. Nothing ever goes right first time, does it? Anyway, it's of no matter. Not particularly worried. And again, just add in a piece about here. That'll do. Perfect stuff. Right, and then let's get quite a bit of that gel medium on because I now want to stick down all of that image, the Victorian
like so. A bit further down. About happy with that. And brushing outwards to try and eliminate bubbles and a few wrinkles if I can. I know it's not going to be totally unavoidable. Because that's just the nature of the beast. I have a little bit of a squeegee. But more than anything, it's actually scraping off the gel medium. So or the matte gel medium, which I don't really want it to do. But that will do. That's fine. Don't think I'm going to get it any better than that anyway. So that will do for now. So all I need to do now is just get that dried off, get all this washed off, and then I'll be right back. So now that that's pretty much dry, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to trim off all the excess tissue paper all the way around the outside. So, grab my scissors and then I'm just going to very carefully just trim it all off. Now that the sheet is mostly dry, I'm going to bring in some white acrylic paint. This is the titanium white from Reeves. I'm just going to drop a splodge on there. I'm going to just clean off my paintbrush. Just a pot of water just to the side. And then I'm going to spritz a little bit of water just to water that acrylic paint down. Now I could use white gesso and do the same thing but I want to just stick to the acrylics for now and then I'm just going to go around the outside first and then bring that back in over the top, start blending out these colours, or just adding a little bit of a wash over the whole thing, just to knock it back a little bit into the background. Now while that's still a little bit wet, I'm going to grab a wet wipe. And I'm just going to gently clean off that section. Because we've got that matte medium all over it, it is going to be kind of protected. So just add that white pen into the background, blend it out a little. A little bit more, darker and stronger at the edges. And then just with that cloth, just rub it slightly, just to reveal a bit more of the picture. And then 
dry cloth, piece of kitchen roll. Just like that. And then, because I've got the white there, I'm going to bring in some burnt umber. I'm just going to mix a little bit of that brown in. And then we can start adding in a little bit, just really sort of loose brush strokes around the outside. That image will start to fade into the background. As we build up our layers of colour. And again, just lightly rub over with that tissue. And as that background starts to kind of break up, I'm going to just start to follow. And you see that pathway. To follow that stroke. Just to give it as a little bit of a kind of false sense of perspective. And again, I'll do the same thing with the roof line, with that brown paint. And then, just very, very lightly, start bringing in those perspective lines further up as well. And it kind of helps just to elongate and accentuate it into the background. Almost making it a part of the original picture, but not quite. Like so. And again, the chimney pots. Elongate, just bring in follow those lines. And if you want to, you can even bring in a line that's almost following the line of the windows. So I'm playing with perspective, um, the lines of perspective a little bit, creating false aspects to the picture that actually aren't there, but fooling the eye to think that actually maybe it does go, it did actually carry on and we didn't actually lose anything when we tore the picture apart. And if you wanted, you could maybe just 
add a little bit more detail in. And just fade that out. All starts to disappear. Okay, give that brush a wash, clean up some of this mess, and then we can carry on to the next step. Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm going to bring back that titanium white again. And this time, let's just get rid of all that rubbish around the end. I'm just going to have a little bit on my finger. And I'm just going to just gently bring in some white. Almost missed the edges. So I'm just going to gently rub that white paint around the end to line it back up again. I could do this with a sponge, but I like the control with my finger. So just gently rub. Nice bit of a white border all the way around. And then where those perspective lines were, just kind of emphasize a little bit. And blend that white all the way around. Again, white wipe. Uh, get rid of all that paint. Not much left of that, so I'll just give it a quick rub. Then we'll give it a blast and we can carry on. Okay, so now that's dry, I'm going to bring in um, this is a, the old school alpha um, from dilutions so i'm going to use that i've got a cosmetic sponge and again with the burnt umber i'm going to add a little bit of that paint onto the mat pick it up with the sponge and then i'm going to start adding in a little bit of text just kind of in the background, towards the bottom, and around the edge. And then I want to do the same up here. And I'm going to do the same up here. Thank you. 
maybe a little bit more just down here at the bottom. Maybe just a tad darker. Just to help to tie it all in together. Liking that to start off with. Okay, get that dry and I'll be right back. So now that stenciling is kind of dry. Um, looking at it, it's kind of drab. There's no pops of colour in there at all. So I'm going to bring out my yellow ochre and I'm going to add some onto my paint mat. And then I have an old credit card machine, well, an old credit card, what's well, not a credit card, it's actually a, a hotel card. And I'm going to just add some perspective lines with that yellow paint, just to give those perspective lines a little bit of a boost. As long as they're going in the same direction and pretty much have a play. gives the illusion of movement as well. Also helps to draw the eye down into the image. Nice little pop of colour there. So I can clean that off. That can then go back into my stash. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. I just want to get that dried off, then I'll be right back. Okay, so those lines are now kind of dry. Nothing's coming off. I want to bring in another colour. So this time I've got some light green, again from Reeves. I'm just going to put all of that on the mat. I've got another cosmetic sponge, and this time I've got uh, the Mini Cubist stencil from TCW. So that's the crafter's workshop. So now I'm going to start bringing in a little bit of that green just to add a pop of colour. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to try and keep it straight so that it goes straight up from that roof line. So we're just going to add in little bits of colour but try and follow the same kind of perspective line that we have in the picture. Just hints 
of green. And then I'm going to do the same thing, following the same perspective line. We've got a drain pipe, or a downspout, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to try and maintain that same perspective line in there too. So just adding in a little bit of extra colour. And I'll try and align this up with the windows. Make sure that I'm keeping it straight. Just adding in little pops of colour. To try and blend and disguise out where the picture ended. Like so. I can do the same thing over here. Follow the line of the doorways. Like so. And maybe just one more in the middle. Follow that line all the way up. In that I actually want to take this a bit further up so just lay the stencil back over and go right up to the top with it a little bit heavier that's better so we've got pops of colour in there too I might just do one sort of lined up with this window here so try and line it up with the windows. Follow the same line of perspective down. Try not to cover up the window though. That'll do. Happy with that? That sponge can go in the bin. And then grab the heat gun again. So that green is now dry. And I want to just bring back that dark colour, that burnt umber. I think I might have said sienna earlier. It's burnt umber. So this time it's really nice, sort of rich chocolatey colour. I actually want to go around the edge now. Yeah. Just give it a little bit of a dark border. So we've still got the white that breaks in, just to kind of lighten it up. That's just going to give us a kind of frame all the way around. I haven't finished with the inside yet, There's still something else I need to do, or want to do. There we go. That kind of gives us that nice circle, that complete circle all the way around. Just helps to, to finish it off, make it like a, a complete piece rather than open-ended if that makes sense. Okay, now I'm not going to throw that away because I'm going to use that again in a little while. Okay, so... Next up, I have 
a big stencil, silhouette stencil. This is a Dilutions one. This is called Ben. Now, you do get the mask pieces as well, um, but I'm using this stencil piece here, and it's this middle figure here that I want. I want to stand this figure just here. I'm hoping it's not going to curl up too much. Just towards the end of the page. Actually, we'll be standing there just so we get that green edge to him. And I want to try and add in this silhouette, this ghostly dark figure. This memory, if you like, shadow. I'll probably have to go around and do this two or three times just to get the depth that I want from it. That's the beauty of these stencils and sponges is that you can go back and keep adding the colour over and over and over and over again until you're happy with the depth and the dimension of the stenciling. Now I want to build this up so that the figure is there almost opaque but with just a little bit But you can see that there is just something in there that's nearly, nearly there. Not quite faded, but still there in the page. Okay, so I now have, I want to add in Actually, no, I'd best dry that, hadn't I? Whoop. That would have been a bit of a disaster. Okay, so I now have a quote that I've got, um, that I've printed off on my computer, on a scrap piece of paper, that I just want to cut out now. going to cut it pretty rough to start off with and then it's a two part quote so this one can be cut pretty close in and then I can just Take off the excess there, not leave much of a white border all the way around. And then snip that off. That's going to go up there, and then this one can go just there. So this is kind of where I'd plan to have them on the art journal page on the beginning. And of course, to get those glued down, I'm going to grab a collage glue stick. And I'll just rub that over. Come up. Okay. 
Okay. And then the final piece. Like so. And then just to finish off, I'm going to grab my trusty football pen. And then I'm going to around the boxes just to make them stand out a little bit more I know they don't really need it because they are white white but they're not going to be in a little while so I'm not pressing down hard and I'm not doing um, deep black lines just literally rubbing just gently and lightly and then I'm actually just going to go around the outside of that shadow Define that shape a little bit more. Because these food ball pens do take a while to dry, I'm going to just give it a little bit of help before I add the final bit. So, okay, so the food ball pen is now dry um, and just want to tone down this white a little bit in the background. So I've just got my potting soil archival ink. I'm not even gonna bother taking too much ink um, onto it. I'm just gonna lightly rub and then just very gently just go over the top, just little circles, just to transfer a little bit of that colour. You can see there's not a lot coming off. I just want to take away that stark whiteness from the paper. But I don't want to go too dark with it. It just helps to tone down the white where there isn't much white in the picture or the art journal page anyway. There is some, but not a lot. So just gently a little bit just to turn it down. There we go. And that will do, I think. I don't think I'm going to do any more at all. All I want to do, literally, just to finish off, is just to sign it and date it. What date it is today? Oops, seventh. Or is it? No, it's not. It's the sixth. I 
I'm done. Complete. So I hope you enjoyed that kind of mixed collage, painterly kind of art journal page. Um, the colours are a bit muted, a bit sombre-ish, but that's kind of my interpretation of the past. You know, the past is black and white. The past has gone and is now in shadow. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.